Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Faisan Ali. Um, uh, recently I got a few messages from different people asking me if I can make a video on smart PLS. So um, I'm going to make a short video just to give you an example of how do you start with smart PLS now. Of course, it's a paid software. Um, you pay somewhere around 20 euros per month. But um, if you go to smart PLS website, you will see right here, uh, you can get a three uh, free 30 digit 30 days trial so um, all you need to do is register if you click on it um, you can put your name your email address you'll get a code you can use that code for 30 days uh, it's a good thing because for most of you who are working on a research paper or your thesis uh, I think you can just use this 30 day trial to do your analysis and so this is what it is now um, so now uh, just stick with me and I'm going to show you a quick illustrative example of how you can do analysis with Smart PLS. Okay, so um, I hope everybody can see it now. So this is how the interface looks like. So whenever you start Smart PLS, right? And that's easy. If you go to smartpls.com, you can see you can download this. Again, just to clarify, uh, Smart PLS is a paid software, so you have to purchase your license. But if you want to get it, like you can get a 30 day free trial. So you can go download it and use it for 30 days. And if you like it, you can go ahead and you know get the license. Uh, for academics, faculty or students, you can also get a 50% discount, which is all on the website, so you can look into that. But once you install it and um, you, Turn on the smart PLS application this is how this interface looks like so the first one here if you look at this this is your project Explorer and you can see all your projects here okay whatever projects you develop it would be here this is your main uh, main pane and then it's extremely simple so you click on new project let's say I click on it and I develop a project called SCM webinar so I Turn it on, and then if you look here in Project Explorer, here I got something called SCM Webinar, which is my uh, new project I just developed. And if you look here is a red error mark in this, which simply means that there's something wrong now. And what's wrong is it says by itself, double click to import data. So you have to import data by double clicking it. So once you double click it, obviously it's gonna bring you into your Windows File Explorer to pick up a data file and put it in. Now remember that whenever you are importing data, you cannot import a SPSS file or any other type of file uh, into Smart PLS. It always picks up a CSV format, which is in Excel. So if you have a data file in SPSS, you can save as, go to file, save as CSV. If you have an Excel data file still, you can go to save as, and then you can see a CSV um, extension in the file saving types and you can save it as CSV and that's how it can save. Once you save it as CSV and you can look at here, all these files are um, saved as comma separated values, which is CSV. And you can pick up something from here to um, go ahead with it. So uh, let me just go to, so here is SCM. So I'm gonna take this one. Um, it's imported. So now once I imported it, you can see in this project explorer that red error term is gone, which means that you do not have any problem now. Now, what they did in this new version of Smart PLS is they made it really, really easy for people. So once you have it, you can see all the things here, which, what I was talking about. So here you can see a column for missing values. So you can see there's no missing values, zero, 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 because it's a clean data file, we have cleaned it up. And you can see all the variables is in this data. You can see the mean, median, minimum, maximum, all these things. But what's very interesting here is that they've also included uh, kurtosis and skewness, where you can see that if your data is normally distributed or non, not normally distributed. So you can see all those things here, which is very, very good thing to be um, providing here. Like you don't have to go to SPSS to all those things. You can do them right here in SPS uh, Smart PLS. So here, you once you look at your data, it looks clean, it looks good, uh, fine. You just close this tab, 
it's done, we are done with the data, it's good. But now we come back to Project Explorer and you can see here under SCM webinar we have two things. So one is this SCM116 record which shows your data file. So if you click on this, you can go back again to the, the same data view which we had. Um, and the other one, if you look at here, it, it's something like a UFO or an alien, but it's, it's basically this blue, oval and yellow items are showing that you can develop your model here. So if you click on this, you come to some place where you will feel like you are an artist or something. And this is what I love about SmartPL is that it's so user intuitive and user friendly uh, interface with this uh, application. And it's extremely easy, extremely easy to develop uh, a model here. And if we go back very quickly to the model which we are uh, going to develop here, I'm going to show it to you and then um, Okay, so here is a model which I'm going to make. Um, if anybody wants, you can take a picture of it so that when I'm making it, you don't lose your sight of this model. But it's extremely easy. You can see there are a few ovals and uh, some stuff. So I'm going to make this model really, really quick on uh, Smart PLS, and I'll show you how you can also make it. So, um, okay, so I come back to this screen, and what I can do is I can decrease this one so that we have a better place to develop this model. Very easy, you don't have many, many things here like you know, Adobe Photoshop or anything. It's very easy, you have select, zoom in, zoom out, you have latent variable, connect, and that's it. There are some other things, but those are, we are gonna talk about them later. Right now, uh, in that model, we had five variables. So I'm gonna click on latent variable, and then I just click five times here. So I have five variables, right? So I, I, I get the select tool, I can make them in line to make them look beautiful. If you want, you can even make it even better. And how you can do it is by clicking on grid here on this side. So you have the grid. I mean, if you are really particular about making things in line and really, really in line, then you can use grid. If you don't want to use grid, you can use snap. And then what snap does is it brings this blue line just to make sure that you are in line. So again, it's making it really easy to uh, develop your models very beautifully. Those of you who have used Amos, uh, when I was using Amos, I was really, really upset with the user interface and it's really, really difficult. So now what we do is we quickly rename these models. You right click, you go to rename, you rename them. Let's say it was IP use and then it was commitment and then we hit trust, share, and the last one is manufacturing performance. So when we have, once we have named all our variables, then we have to put the items, right? So when you have your model, you know which items goes where. So for instance, now once we have all these variables, what are we gonna do is if you look here, Below this project explorer, you will see indicators. So all your indicators are here, right? So let's say for IT use, we have four indicators. All of them are here, like IT internet, IT EPT, IT DW, IT SEM. What you do is you click on the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, you select all four, you just drag and drop them, okay? For trust, here are three of them. I dr click and drop, drag and drop for commitment. And then we have for share, and then we have for manufacturing performance. Now, once I did it, it looks a bit ugly because all of them are, you know, facing the same side. So what I do is like for this share, I want it to go down. So I just click on it. And like on this one side, if you look, we have all these colors and different things. Here we have align. So I click on align below. I click on align on side and it looks beautiful. Now, the thing is that all your variables are looking red. Remember, whenever they are red, it means there's something wrong with your model. Like there's some sort of thing because of which the model do not will not be uh, able to run. And from what I can see here, the problem here is that we did not draw hypothesis. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on connect. I connect here to here, here to here, here, and that's it, boom. You have all of them as blue, which means now your model is error-free. So this is how you're going to make your model. Once this is done, 
uh, it's all you have already done like 60% of your SEM. Okay, now what we do is, as I said, first of all, we do the measurement model because we need to make sure that uh, this variable and these items are all good. Okay, so uh, you look at this calculate, you go click on calculate, and then the first one is PLS algorithm. Since we are using PLS, we need to click on PLS algorithm and start calculation. Done. This is all your results. So if you look here, you have different tabs. Go back to this SCM webinar and you will see you have all these numbers which show all your loadings and these are all your path coefficients and the values inside this uh, variable, this shows you R square because that's your prediction based uh, modeling. So this is how it is. There are a lot of other things you can do. For instance, if you want to see which of these hypotheses is the highest one, what you can do is here, uh, I'm not going to go into that. That's going to confuse you and that's like graphical stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly finish other things. So once you have all these things, um, then you need uh, to report them, right? Now, how do we report them is uh, like this. Uh, so let's say we have this one paper and I'm going to share this paper with you people. So here is a paper which is uh, which was recently published in tourism management and we have used PLS. So uh, here is how you are going to report them. So you have your construct here and then you have all the items and then you have your loadings AVE and composite reliability. So these loadings AVE and comp so now what we need is we need all the loadings we need AVE and we need composite reliability. So we go back to uh, PLS and uh, so we have all of them what we need to do is we click on this tab pls algorithm all our results are here here in the lower section so if we look here on the final results you will see outer loadings now remember why we call them outer loadings because here is our model all these lines inside the model these are inner model all the lines outside these blue circles these are outer model right so we go back to outer loadings, we click on outer loadings, and here we got all of our loadings. So it's extremely easy. Uh, you can clip to uh, copy to clipboard on Excel. You can go to any Excel sheet. Uh, let's say we go to Excel. Here we are in Excel, and we copy paste it. So here is our here are all our variables, here are all our loadings. So all we need to do is copy and cut and paste them here. So here we are, um, you can name your variables here, commitment, ITUs. I'm not gonna go into all of it, but this is how you can do it for all of them. So here you have all your variables and then your items, you can name it as constructs, items, loadings. So we can cover all of this like this. Uh, we have all our loadings and everything. Now for loadings, I said we need to make sure that all of them are over 0 0.708. So you can see all of them are okay, except for some of them, ITUs, um, two of them, one of them is okay, two of them are okay, two are not okay. Uh, so this is how it is. These are all your loadings. If some of them are not good, you can delete them. But remember, you can't delete a lot of them. Uh, a rule of thumb is that you can only delete 20% of the items. You can't delete more than that. So these are your loadings for, um, for other stuff. For other stuff, what we can do is, uh, okay. Once we have loadings, the second thing we have AVE and composite reliability. Again, here below, like in this part, you can see here, uh, you will find other things such as discriminant validity, construct reliability and validity. So we talked about it, we go to construct reliability and validity, and we can look at here, we have Kronbach Alpha here, Kronbach Alpha, and then we have composite reliability, and then we have AVE. So we pick up all these values. We can pick up all these values, and then we can go uh, back to our paper, uh, and you can report all these values, AVE, 
uh, and, co and composite reliability. So you report them like this. The next stage, what we talked about is whenever you are doing uh, SEM, discriminant validity, which is your correlation uh, table, and then the square root, uh, the square of AVE should be higher, a square root of AVE should be higher than all the coefficient of correlations. A smart PLS does it easy again for you. You don't have to do any calculations. If you go back to smart PLS, here is the indicator. You click on this discriminant validity here, you click on it, and here is your table. So all you need to do is just copy this table and paste it in Excel. And here you are with all your variables on both the sides. You just have to do one thing, and that thing is to make bold, make these values bold, which shows that these values are higher than all the other values. So this is your discriminant validity. Now, once you are done with discriminant validity, in the paper, we can see that uh, once it's done, then we have our structural model or our hypothesis testing. Again, extremely simple. Uh, we come back to this model. We are done with measurement model. But for structural model, again, as I said, this is a non-parametric test. So what we do is we use bootstrapping method. What is bootstrapping method? That's again deep in statistics. I'm not going to explain what it is, but I'm just going to show you how you can do that. So you again click on calculate just like PLS algorithm and you will see here bootstrapping. If you click on bootstrapping and you start calculating, so it's going to take a five, six seconds. Once you did it, here you get your table. The first screen you get this table, you copy it, you paste it on, let's say Excel, once you paste it on Excel, what you need to do is just keep the first column and the last two columns. So you delete the these two columns from here, you get them. So the first one is actually your coefficient. The second one is your T value. And the third one is your T value or significance value. So if you look at the first column, you will see the hypothesis, which is commitment, uh, effect of commitment on sharing IT use on sharing, sharing on manufacturing performance, and trust on sharing. So these are all your path coefficients. You can see all of them are okay, except for the last one, which is a negative value. And then you have to look at your p-values. And we all know that in order to support any hypothesis, we have to say that the p-value should be lower than 0 0.05. So here, if you look, the first three, you have p-values lower than 0 0.05, so you can support these hypotheses. And the last one, since it's higher than 0 0.05, that one can be uh, that one can be actually uh, rejected, uh, that hypothesis or not supported. So, uh, so this is how it is. I'm going back to a smart PLS screen, which is here, and. Um, so uh, this is a very basic uh, example of how you can do these things. We are short of time, so I cannot show you more stuff because we have just a couple of minutes left. So except for these things, one other thing which you have to report in structural model, that's your R square. And since we talked that PLS is a predictive or prediction based uh, SEM method. So again, in these findings here in lower end, you click on R square and you will see that you have only um, Sorry, if you, um, once you do the PLS loadings, you will see that the values which are inside this model here, these are your R squares. So for sharing it's 34.5%, for manufacturing performance is 15.4%. So as I said, um, since our focus is on prediction here, here you can see that you have both these R squares. Um, and for R squares, a uh, basic rule of thumb is that it should be higher than 0.1%, which is 10% of the entire variance. Again, some people say it should be higher than 40% in order to make your model somewhat meaningful. So that's very basic smart PLS analysis. Like this is how you develop your model. You run your measurement model. You run your structure.